International Space Station. This is Becky Anderson at the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center in Dubai. How do you read? And Becky, this is uh, Sultan Al Niyadi from uh, the International Space Station. I have you loud and clear. Terrific. It is fantastic to be speaking to you today. How are you? I'm doing great, Becky. It's, uh, it's uh, the dream becoming true, uh, living on board the International Space Station. It can't be better. This is an out-of-this-world interview. Al Nayadi, dubbed the Sultan of Space, is the first Arab to be deployed on a long-term mission in the cosmos. Two, one, engine's full power. And he launched to the ISS for a six-month mission in partnership with NASA and the exploration company SpaceX. The first time uh, I saw Earth, it was a profound moment. We're flying uh, almost 400 kilometers on top of this planet and you see everything. You see the mountains and the forests and the desert and everything that you know of. And it's really great to see uh, this magnificent planet. Sultan, show me around. That looks like a really busy environment that you're in. So just explain where you are and, and what this all means as you float upside down. So on the first uh, month here, Becky, we had a cargo mission. It was full of science. So we had uh, a lot of uh, scientific experiments. We tested uh, medication. We tested uh, technologies. We tested uh, a lot of things that we are uh, uh, maybe testing for the first time. And it's uh, a cutting edge technology. So I was uh, uh, sequencing DNAs. I was applying uh, some medication to heart tissues. And on top of that, we are subjects ourselves. So we have experiments and sensors um, just uh, running on our bodies uh, throughout the mission to be able to understand how the microgravity is affecting the human body when we think about going back to the moon or further into space to Mars and so on. Apart from these scientific experiments, Al Nayari spends his days making repairs both inside and outside the space station. Emirati astronaut Sultan Al Nayadi has ingressed to the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock. Tell me about the spacewalk, Sultan. Amazing or terrifying as an experience? Both. And actually, uh, the name is spacewalk, but we don't walk. We use our hands. So we need to have a very strong uh, forearms to be able to move from one place to another. So it was amazing. It was seven hours uh, continuous. I didn't feel it because I was really focusing into the mission. And uh, it was it was really, really great feeling just to see uh, that you are floating in a spacesuit. It's just like a small spacecraft. It provides oxygen and uh, CO2 scrubbing and cooling. And what is pre preventing you from dying is just like a, a small layer of glass. Tell us, how do you exercise? And give us some examples of, of living in zero gravity. So in, in, in zero gravity, we just float. We are literally in uh, like free float. We, we don't move a lot. So it is important to keep our muscles uh, uh, working. We have a treadmill. We use bungees to tie ourselves to, to be able to run. If we run without any bungees, we'll be just like floating like this. And uh, we have another resistive device, uh, which is simulating weights. And uh, we use uh, s vacuum cylinders to uh, simulate the, the weight and work out, uh, just simulating uh, uh, lifting dumbbells and so on. And Al Nayari says he uses special restraints to keep him from floating around while he's asleep. The space station orbits the Earth every 90 minutes. That means 16 sunrises and sunsets which can play havoc with an astronaut's circadian rhythm. And for a practicing Muslim, Hal Nayari says it would also make fasting during Muslim festivals tricky. Becky, I always say if I'm going to fast, uh, depending on the sunrise and sunsets, I'll be cheating. So I'll be maybe eating every 45 minutes. So that is not applicable. I'm traveling now, Becky, and uh, I think I'm under the uh, uh, description of a traveler. So fasting is not uh, compulsory now. How about celebrating Eid? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, maybe you've seen uh, my first uh, uh, Eid uh, greetings. Uh, I brought uh, my uh, companion, Suhail, 
who's always with me, and uh, I made him wear a, a kandura, the uh, UAE traditional cloth. So he's without the kandura today, but uh, in Eid, I might be uh, doing the same. I'll, I'll wear my kandura, Suhail will wear his kandura, and uh, we'll send some greetings. Al Niadi launched in March with two NASA astronauts and one Russian cosmonaut in what is a transnational mission. How do you all get on? So uh, it's from the name. It's called the International Space Station, and it's a collaboration between uh, multinational uh, agencies. So we all uh, uh, practice and train together as a crew. I tried to uh, teach my crew members some Arabic words, but uh, I'm, I'm failing so hard. Do you guys talk about politics, or do you just get on with what you're supposed to be doing up there? I would say we have uh, really uh, hot topics and uh, mostly talking about sports and our favorite, uh, let's say, things that we want to do uh, when we back to Earth. But honestly, we try to avoid any politics or anything that uh, uh, might uh, interfere with our work. Question from one of our viewers. Have you seen any aliens up there? Not yet, but everybody thinks that Suhail is an alien. So if he's an alien, <laughs> then yes. Station, this is Houston ACR, and that concludes the event. Thank, uh, thank you, you to Becky Anderson. Al Nayadi's mission, just the latest milestone in the UAE's exploration strategy. Sultan Al Nayadi, ladies and gentlemen, wow. Hope you enjoyed that. It was fantastic. Salam Al Mari is the Director General of the MBRSC, the incubator of the UAE's National Space Program. Its crowning achievement to date came in 2021 with the Hope Probe, the first Arab mission to Mars. The UAE has said it wants to see you know, some habitation on Mars by 2117. Is that realistic? If you can send a rover to the moon, you can eventually send rovers to Mars, and then eventually you can send other technology that allows humans to live, and we can be part of that. I mean, our objective is always to try and do these exciting projects that really put the UA in the forefront of exploration. Lofty ambitions, but in a fast-paced international space race where superpowers like the US and China are competing, a strategic vision is key. Almari explains that the investment in space is not just about curiosity. It's part of a wider plan to build the UAE's post-oil economy, he says. So what are we going to see in here? And now we're going into the, the really exciting part, which is really our labs. So this is where the magic happens, where the engineers come and build the satellites, assemble them, test them. Established in 2006, the MBRSC launched its first satellite in 2009 and the first fully Emirati-built orbital in 2018. So now we're all dressed up in PPE just to protect the satellite and the technology from anything. If you imagine a piece of dust on a satellite or on a lens, uh, you can just wipe it off uh, on the ground. You can't do that in space. So we'll close the door. We get about a 30 second air shower as you see it gets stronger. Uh, there's pressure in the room. All of the dust will go out. Imaging satellites already track things like urban growth and environmental change while a new generation are set to improve things like internet speeds and the processing of credit card transactions. Part of a burgeoning global space industry worth about a half a trillion dollars now and set to double in size by 2030. Which is why this Gulf nation is building not just satellites, but an entire industry around them. What's beautiful about this satellite is it's fully designed by our team here. All of the project management, every single piece you see here is designed and, and project management by our team. But the panels themselves are built within UA industry, so these panels, this aluminium structure, all of it is built in UA industry. This is funded by the government, it's supervised by the government, but private sector now is building it. What do they want out of this new satellite? It's all about data. So, I mean, if you look at, you know, they say the new gold or the new oil is data, right? And what this satellite provides is data from space about our planet. And you can use that data for many different things. And that includes data vital in the fight against climate change. Imaging can trace the effects of extreme heat or rising sea levels and allow quicker responses to natural disasters. And this is what we do on a daily basis. So we image Earth, 
Uh, here we have the UAE and we use that for different applications. Some of it can be town planning, some of it can be tracking uh, disasters, uh, looking at the change in the coastline. Monetizing data from space, the new frontier for the UAE and a very small number of other nations. Becky Anderson, CNN, Dubai.